This is an Ion Annapolis bonus podcast. We're on the phone, and unfortunately, we're not in person, but with Jay Bansbach and TJ Barringer, who are the president and music director, respectively, of Sons of the Severn, which is one of my favorite bands. I wouldn't say a band. That's the wrong word for you. One of my favorite musical groups that I don't see nearly enough as I as I really would like to. Thank you guys very much for joining us on the phone and talking about Sons of the Severn. Thank you for having us, John. Great. Thanks, John, for having us. Well, I'll tell you what, where, where did this all start? I mean, how long have you guys been around? I mean, I've been in Annapolis since 96. I think TJ and I met probably about 2010 or 2011, somewhere in there. Yep, thereabouts. And um, I mean, is this a fairly new organization? Well, actually, the chorus started in uh, 1949. It uh, was actually chartered in Annapolis. A group of gentlemen got together after um, seeing a uh, a show in uh, Washington, D.C., uh, the D.C. chapter, and decided they wanted to replicate that and have a, a chorus in Annapolis. So they, they formed a, a, a group that got together and, uh, and were chartered in uh, actually in October of 1949. So we actually celebrated a 70th birthday um, uh, unfortunately, right before the pandemic, so we didn't get the kind of opportunity we wanted to be able to celebrate 70 years in existence. But um, but we will be coming up on us on 75 years as a chorus fairly soon. So um, it, it's an it, interesting background. The, uh, the the first director, there's uh, a great tie into the Naval Academy because the first director is actually a guy named Charles Harry French. And uh, he was with the Naval Academy Band and became the first director of the chorus. He was uh, the Naval Station, uh, led the Naval Station Chapter Choir and uh, um, and took over the chorus in 1949. And uh, and then shortly after that, his, uh, his wife in uh, 1955 uh, chartered the, the first Sweet Adeline's chapter in, uh, in Anne Arundel County. So... Um, not one to be outdone. The first chapter was called the Bay Bells. So, um, and the the name, the Sons of the Severn actually came, if you look back at newspaper articles uh, from the time, um, the, the Naval Academy football team and their sports teams were often referred to as the Sons of the Severn. So not only bases that on the Naval Academy, but pulls the nautical theme of uh, being located near, near the Severn River. So um, you know, we've moved around Anne Arundel County uh, a few times, um, but are proud to be back in Annapolis where we were originally chartered. So. I, I had no idea you guys were that old and you don't sound a day over 35 yourself, but that's, uh, you, know, uh, <laughs> you know, my word, I can't believe it's going to be 75 years. That's crazy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How did you guys get involved with that personally? I'll start with how I started. If that's all right with Jay. Yeah. Um, one, one I, day in the shower. Yeah, sort of like that. No, I actually, I, I grew up in a theater family. So my parents met in the theater. So I was always doing theater or music uh, in one way or another. And when I was in high school, um, there was a an odd um, little uh, rule that um, when I transferred into a high school, into from one high school to another as a sophomore, and I hadn't taken choir my freshman year, my uh, school that I transferred into wouldn't allow students who hadn't taken a prerequisite like choir one to continue taking choir classes at that school. So I had to find a different music outlet. And uh, so I was I was in a church choir with a couple of people who have with a couple of guys who happened to be singing with the local barbershop chapter. Uh, this is up in central Jersey in the uh, mid 90s. And they said, well, why don't you come on down and uh, and and sing with us? And, you know, I was kind of dug the sound of it, figured, you know, what the heck? Let's see what it's all about went and sat in on them as a, as a 16 year old high school student. And the first thing that impressed me about the, this group of guys, you know, some of them were, some of them were, uh, you know, maybe middle-aged and a lot of them were older than that. But one thing I noticed was, Hey, these are some of the uh, youngest old guys I've ever been around in my entire life. <laughs> <laughs> and the other thing that really impressed me about it, uh, the first time that, you know, they kind of led me around the room and introduced me to, to some of the guys I was singing with. And um, it was the first time in my life that, you know, 
grown adult males had come up to me instead of saying, hi, I'm Mr. So-and-so, they would say, hi, I'm Hal, or I'm Tom, uh, you know, or I'm Art, and it's nice to meet you. Come on and hang out with us. So just having that peer relationship with uh, guys that age was a, a, a real building block for me and just kind of helped usher me into adulthood. And and so I stuck with it. Now, of course, I've been doing it for 27 years. Now I'm the old guy in the room. And, <laughs> yeah, and I meet some of these, well, these younger guys coming in who are singing our chapter and kind of kind of reliving that from the other side now. Well, that's fantastic. Well, Jay, how did you get involved in this? Uh, actually, a totally different route. I mean, I did I did musical theater in high school and um, unfortunately didn't do, uh, I, you know, I did instrumental music up into up to high school, and uh, and I, God, I you know thinking about it today, wish, sure wish I had been in the the choir in high school. So, but um, the uh, I came to it um, in my thirties. I was just uh, looking for something to do on a Tuesday night. I was kind of moping around. Uh, I just. Uh, been divorced <laughs> and as, as a lot of people can attest to but uh have been uh was just looking for something to do and saw an ad in the newspaper and i uh wandered in off the the street um that night and at that time uh uh the sons were located up in glen burnie at a church at uh on glen, glen burnie united methodist church and wandered in and uh i remember coming over and there was a gentleman named Orville Henschel who was kind of a, a, a local legend um, in regard to barbershop singing um, and his ability to recruit people. And uh, so uh, they very earnestly looked at me and, and said, uh, um, what, what do you sing? And I said, I don't know, how about bass? And they went, oh, okay. So, so that's been 30 years. Uh, um, you know, I, I, I loved it because as a, as a group of guys, you know, having that bond, um, being able to come every Tuesday night and have, have those guys that, uh, were there and supported you. And, uh, um, you know, I was having a, a rough time then. And then shortly after that, my dad passed away. So a lot of those guys became father figures to me. I mean, I, sure. I, you know, bounced, uh, had, was able to bounce problems off of them or, you know, share, uh, uh, successes and um, and they really became a family and I still consider you know the chorus of a, a family to me. I mean, it, um, it's uh, um, it, the fellowship is just something that uh, um, that drew me to it. And of course, obviously, the music um, uh, it gives me an outlet to be able to sing. I uh, we all have the the advantage that we have is that we we get to sing with a bunch of guys that are uh, really good singers, but also we get to branch out and, um, you know, as TJ will, will probably share with you in a minute, a little bit about the music itself, but um, singing four part harmony and, you know, you get to branch out and form your own quartet and, uh, and then sing with just four guys in a quartet, um, which is even uh, a, a, a more fun experience. So, well, I imagine a quartet is probably a lot more, I'll say, difficult and less forgiving, if you will. I mean, you, I, I mean, I know when, when I go, I, I have a horrible voice when I get into church and I'll sit there and sing. And I mean, I'm, I'm perfectly happy to sing because I'm, I'm lost in the crowd. You know, I can't imagine if it was only four of us or if I had to do a solo or something like that. I'd be like, are you kidding me? But you mentioned it's a barbershop chorus and we know the term barbershop quartet. What designates a barbershop as opposed to a corral or a... See, I'm showing my artistic ignorance here. Perfectly reasonable question. Um, barbershop specifically refers to where where this kind of, this style of singing started. So if you go back to turn of the century, like pre-radio days, the music industry was driven by sheet music sales as opposed to um, recordings, right? And so music was written relatively simply and followed a very common harmonic pattern that the ear normally just, you know, tends to, to gravitate toward and pick up on. Uh, around the same time, the meeting place for, for men in just about any kind of town or city was the local barbershop. It was, you know, you'd have to go there, you know, what, every two weeks to get a cut and probably every, every other day or so to get a shave. So the same guys would end up in the same place day after day after day after day after day. And since there was no, you know, real media entertainment or anything, 
you know, people pass the time by talking with each other. And because everybody was kind of involved in this through their homes or through their churches with these, you know, very common popular songs that everybody seemed to know, it just kind of became a, 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 a normal activity to sit around in the barbershop and sing a song while you're just waiting to, to waiting on a shave or waiting on a haircut. Eventually, it's, you know, it, it would go from just people standing around singing in unison to developing little harmonies, you know, both above the melody and below the melody. And then you'd find out that there were, you know, people that had different vocal ranges and they would just start slotting notes. And what you found over time is that what these, this common harmonic pattern referred to it as the circle of fifths and, you know, music theorists call it the circle of fifths. What you need in order to set that off is you need this barbershop seventh chord or this dominant seventh chord, which is made of four central parts. So yeah. as long as all four of those parts are covered, you can set those chords into motion. So it basically boiled down to having just one person covering each of those individual voice parts. And then the specific unique thing about barbershop or what gives it its unique barbershop flavor is the fact that the chords are voiced rather tightly instead of in a, in a choral setting with, you know, ladies and men singing together where you typically hear the melody on top, you know, soprano singing on top or a typical men's choir where you hear the, the melody line in the very top and the tenor line are melodies in the middle. So we have what's called like a second tenor or a lead part who sings the melody and there's a voice part, a tenor part harmonizing on top of them. And of course, then you have a bass and a baritone that are slotting the notes below. So the melody is nested inside the chord instead of on top. And so that's what gives it its unique flavor. And that's why they refer to it as barbershop harmony, because that's where it originated. Huh. I, I, and, I, and I do hear that when you say that you're kind of in the middle um, mm -hmm. vocally. I, I, now I, I totally see that. That makes a lot of sense to me as, you know, as I've seen you guys perform. Now, you guys mm -hmm. are a nonprofit, right? We are. So that means uh, you can take money and nonprofit educational. You can you can take money and they can deduct it if they don't so donate, right? Absolutely. Yeah, if anybody absolutely. wants to yep, if somebody wants to donate to our cause, um it's a tax deductible donation. We use it towards, you know, um paying the operating expenses of the chapter and also for, you know, music education programs that we'll run when we partner with a local high school or when we do something in the community things that further our mission and kind of further our, our reach and bring barbershop to more people. Well, I imagine that you've got competitions and everything else that, that you've got to get to and everything as well. But what does Sons of the Severn, and, and I should say that the website is singanapolis.com, uh, yes. S-I-N-G, annapolis.com. What are your needs? What? How can we support you? I mean, the obvious answer is that we can go and listen to you sing. Uh, you know, that's that's the low-hanging fruit. Mm -hmm. But what, right. how else can we support Sons of the Severn? Um, you know, we can attend, obviously, performances. We can, you know, we can donate. Uh, are you looking for singers? Are you looking for helpers, people that can't sing? <laughs> we're always looking. Well, we're always looking for singers and we're always looking for supporters, too. Um, on the singing end, obviously, any it, – it doesn't – it you don't have to be a virtuoso – singer to sing with the sons of the Severn. I mean, yeah, it helps to have sung before. It helps to have some group singing experience, but the, the basics are, you know, if you're, if you're the kind of person who can match pitch you can read music a little bit and you have that kind of intuitive ear for, you know, hearing where things go and you're coachable, chances are you can pass the audition to be in this group and then sing at a level that you never thought you could sing at before. Um, as far as the, the non-singing support stuff, I mean, that's kind of Jay's area of, uh, of expertise. Jay, what do you think the yeah, chapter I mean, would most benefit from? Well, we always benefit from patrons, uh, you know, anyone that wants to donate to the, the chorus. Um, uh, if, if we have specific shows or projects that um, we're doing or working on, uh, one of the things that... Uh, uh, we've always had in the past as a as a service project. So as um, we come out of the as we're coming out of the pandemic, um, our, our primary goal is to uh, boost our membership um, because I know a, every group, church choir, every uh, arts group um, has has suffered losses throughout the pandemic. You know whether it's just sheer manpower. And then we, you know, when we have events, we ask for folks to, you know, assist um, during those events, um, whether it's help staging a, a concert or uh, um, to help as an usher, those kinds of things. Um, that a lot of uh, the arts organizations ask for those kind of 
that kind of help. So, so you know, we're always looking, you know, and our our primary focus right now is to uh, is to boost our membership as a, as a chorus itself. Well, what is the what is the time commitment for something like this? Uh, just you know, let's just fantasize for a minute and think that I could sing, and uh, I passed I passed this audition, and uh, I didn't pull a Lucio Lucio ball and. <laughs> And you said, "Hey, come on out. What what is what is the commitment on here? I mean, obviously you rehearse. Obviously um, you travel and you go do shows to different places and you perform at different venues. Uh, what what is the time commitment? The, the time commitment really boils down to being able to to be at weekly rehearsals. First of all, um, being able to put in some some time on one's own during the week." learning you know learning the music and going through what was covered in rehearsal so you know some some daily practice half hour hour a day whatever um as far as the organized commitment beyond the weekly rehearsals we go to competition typically twice a year in the spring and in the fall and then uh th that's usually somewhere regional like anywhere from um, central Pennsylvania down to maybe Virginia, depending on you know which chapter is hosting the convention that particular a particular go round, and then of course um, usually maybe one or two performances a month locally uh, down in Annapolis or uh, you know up in Baltimore, maybe on the Eastern Shore, depending on again who's who's interested in having us come out and visit. And again, obviously with the with things having been in lockdown for a while, we hadn't had too many opportunities to do those. And so um, as we as we go in and rebuild, there's hopefully going to be more opportunities to do that. But right now, the, the biggest performance schedule that we've got is doing these three Midnight Madness uh, engagements in December. Yeah. After that, there, it, like I said, it may be it may be one two shows a month. It may be it may be fewer. It may be a little bit more depending on on how things start to pick up as we come out of this. And I do want to talk about the Midnight Madnesses, which probably should be called Midnight Mad Nye, if it's plural, I would think. But <laughs> I like that. I, you yeah. know, but uh, there are three of them coming up and it's December 1st, 8th and 15th, which are the um, are you going to be at all of them? We are slated to be at all of them. And you can't really tell me where you're going to be because you guys stroll around and bring merriment to everywhere. Yeah, that's one of that's one of the things they uh, appreciate about having us there is we're portable. Um, but typically, <laughs> typically, what we will do if you want to try to catch us is we typically start on Maryland Ave. Not surprisingly enough, we yep. meet at the barbershop on at Maryland barbershop. Ave yep. at Farage's barbershop yep. on Maryland Ave. Uh, and uh, shout out to Faraj and Nancy, who, who have been great supporters of the chapter for the last 10 plus years. But we usually start there and work our way down to uh, Main Street, starting down by the, the Market House and working our way up Main and then work our way back over to Maryland Ave. So typically, you know, we'll, we'll you know, do that to a couple of couple of little gigs out on Maryland Ave, work our way over to uh, City Dock sing a little bit down there and then stay up main street and then make our way back over to Maryland out. So, you know, look for us starting around, usually we start around seven thirty, eight o'clock and then uh, spend the rest of the evening on Maryland Ave and then entertain and, and do some informal singing there as well. Annapolis gets very magical at Christmas time with just everything that goes on with the lights and the, the, the trimming of the trees and everything else. And certainly when the midnight madnesses roll around and you've got all of that music, I mean, you've got, you know, it might be somebody with a with a jazz band, a jazz trio that's playing, you know, someplace. You may have somebody that's, you know, strolling around as you are as a barbershop uh, quartet or a chorus. You've got the Sweet Adelines. You've got St. Mary's puts a, a chorus up there and everything else. And it's just you guys really bring and seal the magic in for the city uh, on certainly on those three nights and, and beyond. Uh, and I appreciate it. I, you know, I look forward to those nights every night, every all year long. And it's funny because you always end up meeting people that you haven't seen in a year. It's that's just Absolutely. where you yeah. end up seeing them. And it's just a sort of a strange type of a situation there. But it's are are, you know, excited to have you. We we will frequently go in and sing inside a business also. Um and they're just they're always excited to have us. So it's you know, it's part of that community. Sure. Well, uh, yeah. one thing on, on your um, rehearsals and your performances, I know from my involvement in 
you know, theatrics, I guess, during high school and stuff like that, um, and, and even a little bit in college, we always kind of look forward to the after party. Did we have any of those things going on there with the Sons of the Severn? Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, after glowing is actually a, 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 a sport of its own within barbershop. Um, so uh, typically after, you know, after a convention or after a show or even for us after Midnight Madness, there is almost always an after party uh, at our conventions. You know, there are hospitality suites and hospitality rooms that the local chapters host. And so it's a uh, there's tons of food and maybe some libations and uh, uh, all the quartets go around, make the rounds of the rooms and put on mini shows in the rooms, which is fantastic. So you can you can find a room full of people whom you, you enjoy hanging around, get yourself a sandwich or some chips, you know, have a have a cocktail or whatever. And, you know, all the best quartets from the area are going to come through, parade through that room and entertain you. Um, when we do shows, obviously, there's always a huge after party, cast party, afterglow, after we do a big stage show. And then, of course, during Midnight Madness, once we're done doing the formal performing around town, the party heads back to Capistrano's on Maryland Ave. But, yeah, so it's it's part of the culture in Barbershop uh, to, to just have that that fraternal aspect, that fellowship aspect where, yeah, we're, we're serious about trying to make the best music that we can, but we also know that we got into this to be doing something with other people and to have that human connection. And, you know, after being isolated for three years, I can tell you what, there's, there's a lot of people who are craving some genuine human connection with other people. And so that's what really makes our, uh, organization and our hobby so special for a lot of our guys. You know, and we after, and we afterglow weekly. I mean, we yes, uh, yeah. There's usually a, a group of guys that comes mm-hmm. out after rehearsal on Thursday night. So. Absolutely, Thursday nights we'll go out, we'll <laughs> have a few wings, have a few beers, uh, sing a few tags, have a, just have a good time and 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 kick back for a while. Sounds sounds like a great deal to me. Well, I'll tell you, I am looking forward to seeing you guys again, and I will check your website out to find out when you're doing a performance performance as opposed to a strolling performance, because I've, I've never seen one of those, and, and I would I would like to do that. But December 1st, 8th, and 15th is the Midnight Madness ones, and you said about 7 o'clock, Maryland Avenue, work your way down to Main Street, and then up Main Street, and back over to Maryland Avenue, and... Yep, back over to Maryland Avenue around 10 p.m. And then we just kind of hang with Farage until he kicks our butts out. He never does that, does he? <laughs> no, as a matter of fact, he's like, <laughs> stick around a little bit longer. Stick around a little bit longer. You don't have to go yet. You don't have to go yet. That's right. Here, here, I'll, I'll, I'll leave you the keys. <laughs> just lock it mm-hmm. up on your way out. <laughs> Almost. Well, I'll tell you what. I want to thank you guys very much for your time tonight. I don't want to take too much of it because uh got to get your practice in. You, you, you've got some gigs coming up in a couple of weeks. So. <laughs> But I'll tell you, before we leave, though, I mean, we're sitting here talking to a two members of a barbershop chorus or a quartet, depending if they get two other guys to go stroll around with them. But do you have something you can send me that will let everybody that's listening uh, get a little taste of Sons of the Severn? Absolutely. We can share some audio with you. How, 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 how what is the age range of the group? Uh, probably our youngest member right now is in his mid late twenties, and uh, and the oldest mem- older older or oldest members of our group are probably right now in their. Do we have anybody who's at around yeah. the seventy mark? Yeah, Mike's seventy two. So, mm-hmm. Yeah, yep. so, so is this, he would be a, our oldest. Yeah. So is this primarily mm-hmm. a? I mean, I mean, it's an adult. It's an adult group. Is that almost by definition? I mean, you're not you're not having any eighteen, nineteen, twenty. We have. We've had we've had we've had members as young as sixteen okay. in the chorus. I joined my far, first barbershop chorus when I was sixteen. Uh, the, the only real requirement is is the musical requirement, and conducting yourself as a man of good character. Interesting. Okay, so is so this is not this is an all ages type of a thing for the most part. Um, Absolutely, with, without getting ridiculous, and it's not just a. Uh, and, and I don't think thirty is a middle age, but I mean you know a, no. a, an my, old, old, my, older my older young adult. <laughs> Yeah, uh, my assistant director, John, his father, the chorus, and John actually joined the Sons of the Severn when he was 12. Wow. That's and at impressive. the time, there were probably two other two other young guys who were like 12 and 13 years old in the chorus at the time as well. 
Well, I'll tell you what. I'm going to let you guys go. TJ, I'm going to see you guys. I will come and see you on the 1st, the 8th, or the 15th. And, Jay, I will introduce myself if, as long as you're going to be down here strolling as well. But right now, people want to go to singanapolis.com, which is their website. And if you could just shoot me over an email, some songs uh, or a song, that would be wonderful. And we'll give everybody a taste of the Sons of the Severn. Jingle bells swing and jingle bells ring, snowing and blowing up bushels of fun. Now the jingle hop has begun. Jingle bell, jingle bell, jingle bell rock. Jingle bells chime in jingle bell time. Dancing and prancing in jingle bell square. In the frosty air, what a bright time! It's the right time to rock the Bell time is a swell time to go, to go gliding in a one horse sleigh. Oh, giddy up, jingle horse, make up your feet, jingle around the clock. Mix and mingle in a jingle and beat. That's the jingle bell rock. What a bright time! It's the right time to rock the night away. Hey, jingle bell. Well time to go, to go biding in a one horse sleigh. Giddy up, jingle horse, pick up your feet. Jingle around the clock. Mix and mingle in a jingle and beat. That's the jingle bell rock. That's the jingle bell. That's the jingle bell. That's the jingle bell. Jingle bell rock. Everybody. The Jingle Bell Rock! Jingle Bell Rock! This has been a bonus podcast from Ion Annapolis. Please visit us at ionannapolis.net. Follow us on Facebook at All Annapolis and on Twitter at Ion Annapolis. And if you haven't subscribed to the Daily News Brief podcast, go for it. And all of your local news will be delivered to your phone, tablet, or smart device by 6 a.m. every Monday through Friday.